In 2019, we began to build our dream. But the journey started long before you were invited to watch. We walked a path that spanned nearly two decades. There were times of joy, pain, and everything in between. Our lives have completely changed and we're ready to tell you how it happened. We're not holding back. Our mistakes, regrets, what we wish we could change, our best decisions, and if we do it again, you'll hear it all. Come back in time with us behind the camera and answer the question, is, is self-building self worth it? it? All right, welcome back to Mr. Post Frame. For those who you, of you who don't know, my name is Paul, this is my wife, Emily. This is going to be the intro video to a new series we're going to be doing called, Is Self-Building Worth It? And we are gonna go back and kind of relive our journey, um, watching each video, narrating them, talking about where we were at that point in our life, um, you know, the things that we had to do to make this happen and give you guys an understanding of what it does take. So at the end of this, you can you can kind of figure that out on your own. But it is January 17th, 2024, and we started this journey back in 2018, really. Yeah. So I think in this video, we're just gonna cover who we were, where we came from, and uh, kind of what we do today and how we help people just like you. So yeah. I guess, Emily, let's just talk about um, you know, where, where we came from, just give them a history of who we are and how, sure. like, I guess where me and you started. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, we could go all the way back to before you and I even knew each other, you were, uh, you had a lot of different jobs in your early twenties and you worked for a lot of different trades, which is part of why you ended up knowing how to do what you do. Um, but then you and I met in, uh, 2006, yeah, I think it was, it was a long time ago and through some mutual friends. And then we got married in 2007, August of 2007. And by 2008, we agreed that we were just, we weren't on a path that was gonna get us anywhere productive. Yeah, um, we both had kind of, um, I, was, I was in law enforcement and you were working for a nonprofit and we didn't even know if you were gonna get a paycheck or not. <laughs> yeah. And to kind of go back in time a little bit, I grew up on a farm. So I've always been around, you know, outdoors, building, post frame structures, all that kind of stuff. And before we actually met, I had bought a old two story brick house that my great grandfather had actually built in 19, I think it was 1948. And it was unlivable. And that, that's a key word there, unlivable, because as Emily and I went through our marriage, everything, every place we bought to get to this point was unlivable. Yes. Unlivable, unbuildable. I mean, that was kind of a motto. Right. Unlivable, and yet somehow we still lived in it. Yeah. So. I had no choice at that time. I didn't have any money, so I just decided I was going to gut this house down to the studs and remodel it. So um, I had worked for a girl that I grew up with, her dad was an electrician. I had worked for him part-time doing residential electri electrical just on the side. I'd worked for a mechanical engineer, learning HVAC, pipe fitting, plumbing. Um, and I've always uh, built stuff. So I had a general knowledge on how to do that. So my grandfather taught me a lot. My dad taught me a lot. Um, but when you moved in, I don't, I was pretty much done with like the major reno, but we, we went, we took it even further. Cause then I, I decided to raise the ceiling in the master bathroom and oh, add yeah. a closet and we, yes. we self, you know, we made some cabinets for the kitchen. I mean, we lived in, you know. Yes. I mean, we, yeah, at the time it was, it like stressed me out because it was the two of us and we were like, put our mattress on the floor in the other bedroom so that we could be demoing and creating a bathroom in our master and like looking back, like that was literally no big deal <laughs> compared yeah. to some of the other stuff that we've done now. Uh, but 
I think I think though one of the key points in our journey, and this is especially good for the younger generation generation watching this, is early on in our marriage we decided that we were going to go through the Dave Ramsey um, Financial Peace University School, which is about paying off your debt, all that stuff. So yeah. we did that. Mm -hmm. um, we had to pay off your school loans. We had to pay off the house. We sold our nicer vehicles and we bought 97 Mercury Tracer, 95 Ford Escort, two-door hatchback. I remember those. I worked on them a lot, got made fun of a lot. But really that set us up for success um, for the rest of our life. And I think the key in that point in our life being debt-free is it gave us options. Because if we fast forward, um, we were able to make some moves that we wouldn't have been able to make had we not done that. We were 28 and 24 when we got married and we were not on career paths that were going to be outrageously lucrative. Like we had just chosen to be very like, you know, mi middle of the road, average, like career paychecks, that type of thing. And so for us, we we knew that we couldn't take major risks and stuff because we weren't like we were guaranteed paychecks, but we weren't guaranteed except for the nonprofit. But we weren't <laughs> yeah except for that that time in my life. But we weren't guaranteed that that like things were going to exponentially explode on us because we just you were a police officer like yeah. there was just a huge limitation to that. And so for us, it really worked out well to focus on. Uh, you know, prioritizing being debt free and stuff at that time before we had children. And we also had in the back of our minds that we wanted the option to have just a one income household if we did have children. Yeah. So th those were the two big factors that motivated us and why adhering to that lifestyle and those principles really worked out amazing for us. Yeah, and I think the, the biggest thing is it gave us options because yes. if we kind of fast forward through we started having kids um, and I got further on in my police career. I just, you know, the way the, the way the world was going and like I worked in a pretty in one of the most violent cities in America. Um, I just was like, I'm done. Like mentally I was checked out and I'm like, we got to make a change. And if we wouldn't have been able to do that no. if, if we had been in a different situation. So, right. The real estate market where we lived was oh. just very lackluster. I mean, there just was a lot of factors that that. Um, being debt free ended up giving us all of the freedom that we needed. But I guess another point that I kind of want to touch on is one thing that I did, and I didn't really intentionally do it because I wasn't thinking like, hey, um, I'm going to really work hard at this job because someday later in life, I'm going to use it. But everything I did, I tried to learn and do the best that I could. And no matter what you're doing in life, it can somehow teach you something give you an extra skill set that will pay off later in life. And that's true with um, my journey with Midwest Whitetail. I, yes. I was a passionate whitetail hunter. When Bill Winkie started Midwest Whitetail, I joined their pro staff, videoed hunts. And, you know, you fast forward all these years later, that allowed me uh, the skills to be able to start and kind of do our own, my own yeah. editing, my own filming. Yes. And all that stuff. So every everything you do can somehow later on affect your effectiveness, I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you none of us can see in the future. So you don't know what kind of opportunities are going to come from what you're currently in or from your current hardships and things like that. I mean, one of the coolest things about this journey is that, you know, Midwest Whitetail, the the guy that actually took in all of the uh, interview videos and stuff and people auditioning to be on Midwest Whitetail, we're actually building his house next, this year for them. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, so just the, you never know what, what the connections are gonna be that you make. And, um, and I think that that's important to remember. And you, it's just sometimes like the journey is, is sometimes gonna be long and a very long road. I mean, I mentioned we were 28 and 24 when we got married, but we're 44 and 41 now. Yeah. So like this has been better part of 20 years of, of doing this. Yeah. I mean, so I guess now that we've kind of given a, uh, a little bit of history, how did, how did we make our way to Iowa and start our self build journey? Yeah. And I guess, you know, to make a long story short, like I said, I just mentally, I was checked out of law enforcement and 
Emily and I knew that we had to do something different. We had a young family. We wanted something better. And so I literally just went in. I had lined up a job here in Iowa through some friends, but I just went in, quit one day, and I moved. And we had, I mean, the kids were four, three, and newborn, newborn when yeah. I left. Yes. Yeah. You moved in January of 2018 to Iowa and you would spend seven days there working and then you'd be home for seven days. And so we had our third was 12 weeks old at the time. And then we, our, our oldest was born on the same day as the youngest. And so she was four, just turning three year old and then this newborn baby. And, and I was at home <clears throat> and I was getting the house ready. I was showing the house cause we sold it ourselves. So I am, you know, getting three kids out the door, making sure that everything is absolute perfection um, to show this house and stuff. And then you're in Des Moines. And so then when you're not sleeping, you're trying to find us a place to live there. Which I ended up buying uh, another unlivable place. <laughs> and I actually, at 38 years old, I bought this house in West Des Moines that was disgusting. And I can, I'll never forget this. I was, I was sleeping on the floor in a sleeping bag. There was no heat, no water. I mean, it, it was. It was like in April, I think I, when we bought that. And I remember thinking, what am I doing? What in the world am I doing? Yeah. Cause we had vowed not to do that. Yeah. Um, and yet somehow we found ourselves with this house that nobody could move into. So, but our house in Illinois, it sold. Uh, so the kids and I were ready to move in May of 2018. And um, so, yeah, I, I remember we came, but we had to like live at your parents in Missouri for a couple of weeks because like you I didn't have running water. Yeah, house, didn't yeah. have any running water. So, <laughs> so, you know, Paul gets this bathtub running. So until I think like August or September of that. So this is May of 2018 until like August or September, uh, we're working off of a bathtub as the only source of water in the whole house. The kitchen was still under construction, nothing, no other sinks were installed. I mean, so we're like, we're literally washing the dishes in the bathtub, cleaning the bathtub, then washing the babies in the bathtub. And then like, if you need water, that's where you fill up your water bottle. I mean, I it's did, just- I did, however, put a towel on the floor <laughs> so we could transport all the dishes into the kitchen without having to take them one at a time. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so that's the situation that we found ourselves in. And it was, uh, I mean, it was challenging because we're, we're pretty, we're already pretty worn out. I mean, our kids were like so little. We had been through a lot in the last few years of not having a home that felt like we were settled or anything like that already coming into this. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm working this new job which it was a really, really good paying job, had great benefits, but the schedule was just awful. I was working 12 hour shifts. Usually it ended up, I would be seven days on, seven days off, but then it would usually end up you're working 10, 12 days on, a couple off because if guys took off, I was confined to a small, you know, I, I would consider a small space. I'm not the type of person that likes, I'm not an office person. I'm not like, hey, I wanna be stuck in a building. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this. And then I'll never forget, it was um, it was Christmas Eve, right? When Lindley had her seizure. Yeah. It was Christmas Eve. I was working. I had been working a bunch of days in a row. Um, got a call from Emily that, you know, our, our baby had a seizure. And I wasn't able to, like, be there. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm like, I'm going to quit another job. And, you know, I'm 38. I might as well quit again. <laughs> and so... I just, you know, after that, I went home and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to rent us a condominium. I'm quitting my job and I'm my job is going to be to remodel this house. And then I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start my own business because I want for the first time in my adult life to have control over my own schedule. I want to be present with my family and, you know, that's what, that's what we did. Yeah. And, and Emily was like, you need to start a YouTube channel and document this. We were, our, our thought process at the beginning, at least my thought process with it was, well, if I start a YouTube channel, I can tell people, hey, go to the YouTube channel. You can see what kind of work I do because I didn't know anybody out here. I didn't have any friends out here. So I'm like, I got to have some way to show people the kind of work I do. Yeah. 
I'm not sure what your motivation behind the YouTube channel was at that time. Yeah, I mean, my motivation was that when I first started staying home with with our kids, um, I found YouTube because our, our oldest is 10. So 10 years ago, I start watching YouTube videos and I came across these beauty videos and I watched them and I watched how they would explain things and the con and then I was just like, well, why couldn't you do the same concept with construction? I mean, it's the same same gist, you know, so I'd always had that tucked in the back of my mind that like that would be brilliant and that's what we could do. And so, uh, yeah, so I insisted I, cause around the same time that you decided that this job that you were at was not going to be enough. And this house was that we were living in that was half remodeled was never going to get done with the schedule you, you had. You also presented the option of a post frame home, which I didn't really understand much about that at the time. And you said, well, it's just like the barns that are on, that were on the farm. And I was like, okay, well, you know, why not? Like, and, it, and I was, I think, I think what made me really like willing to say yes was that I was just so tired of having everything be a ton of work. Well, because, and you said, it'll be low maintenance. And I said, perfect. Like, because we were at the point where, okay, when we get this house done, we have to go somewhere where we can run our business out of. So yes, we were looking for small acreages with a house in, in a, building. a building. And the problem we were encountering is every house we found, every property we found is one, it was way out of our budget. And two, we would have been right back in the same boat ripping the house down to the bones again to remodel it to get it to where it was decent mm -hmm. or in where we would want it right i mean there's right. always and so we just i i made the suggestion hey we let's look for some land land's never a bad bad investment i've always wanted to own own land i'd like to own a farm someday because that's how i grew up so we just started looking and we found, you actually found this one. I had seen it before. I'm like, I don't like it the way it just looked on a map. So that's kind of lesson number one is don't, you know, make a decision on whether you want to buy something until you actually set foot on it. Because I was down here looking at another piece of property and Emily's like, just go buy it. You're down there, see what you think. And as usual, I was with a realtor. He drove, drove to the property, couldn't even drive in up the driveway. It was so overgrown. And we go in here and I'm like, this is it. <laughs> this yeah. place is a disaster. Nobody's going to want this place. <laughs> I want it. Right. Because I saw, like, I had this mentality, like, I can take something that's completely unlivable, unbuildable, and I can turn it into something. Like, I, I have that ability to envision something, and I'm like, I can, I can see this already. I can see the drive. I can see... Yeah. It kind of checked all the boxes for me because I wanted a place where I could walk out the back door and go hunting, and I could teach my kids all of those things. And so we're like, let's just buy it. Right. We're not going to get hurt. It's 35 minutes from Des Moines. So it the very minimum, we can clean it up, get it buildable, and we can sell it. Right. Yeah. And so then, I never I never even stepped foot on the property before we bought it. No. But that's, I mean, that's all right. I've done pretty well, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's that's actually not the first time. Yeah. I mean, you never even saw the house that I bought in West Des Moines. That, right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's plenty that I've just, I've taken the risk and I think that's part of what ended up kind of working out is that for as, for as many challenges as you and I have had in our relationship, like one thing is that I know, I think at the end of the day, I know that I can trust that you're like, you, you've got enough creativity, you have enough vision that, you, that you're seeing something that is going to be great. Like I, I would trust you to like give us the layout for a remodel because you said, I know this is going to turn out good. And it always did. Yeah. And so I had it in my mind, once we bought this piece of property, I'm like, okay, I think I can probably convince her to just build on it. <laughs> and I don't know, we closed on it in October. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was October 1st, I think. Something like or, that, yeah, 2018. And um, I had come out, I came out here and bow hunted a couple times. And while I would sit in the tree stand, I would just sit there and envision like where I would build the house, what it would look like. I hadn't done any cleanup or anything like that. And so for me, like the best way that I can design something is like if I can see the property and I can be like, oh, okay, this is where I want to look out. This is where I want to pull, you know, the driveway to come, where I want to pull into the, in the garage, that's just how my mind works. And so I would sit in the tree stand and I, you know, I originally had in my mind, we were gonna build like a 2,400 square foot house, but obviously it turned into something more than that for those of you who have watched. But um, I mean, I think, it, I think it worked out good, but you really didn't have a 
whole lot to go on as far as a post frame home. No, I mean, we didn't know, like I, I told you the story the other day, I actually knew a girl in college whose uh, sister literally converted a barn um, back where I grew up. And that was, that was the closest reference that I had. Like I said earlier, I mean, I think the thought of we get this built and then there isn't maintenance, there isn't uh, a lot of things that are going to take up the time to take care of, that really appealed to me because I think we were both so exhausted <laughs> yeah. uh, from, from, the, from the journey that we had already been on. Um, so that's what convinced me. But then, you know, the word barnuminium started coming up. And at first I was like, you know, I don't know what, how I feel about that. I mean, you know, now today it's like, that's all we call it. But, um, but yeah, it was like, I, I wasn't sure what to think about that and stuff. And um, yeah, yeah, here we are. Here we are. So I think that is, that's, you know, that's the story of how we got to where we began our build journey. So, but we, that is what we're going to cover in this series. We're going to go through the series that I um, did while I built this. And we're going to talk to you guys about, you know, the things that we were struggling with just in our personal lives, um, like the challenges that it took. Like, I mean, we had, we had things go wrong while we were doing it. Um, things that will help you be more efficient. But I guess um, that's going to be, we will, we will launch into that in the next episode. But to give you guys who are not familiar with us kind of a background of what we do now is our business has morphed into custom home building, well, custom barn dominium building. Mm -hmm. We have a full uh, design service that is back 40 buildings. Um, we have uh, all kinds of resources for people. Our whole business has really come to help people achieve what we have done. Yes. Yeah. So we told a lot you, easier. Right. So we basically told you everything up to the build starting and now fast forward almost five years. Like this is, this, this is, is what it's morphed into. Yeah. This is what's happened in our lives. This is how we've become uh, Mr. and Mrs. Post frame. And we, we've definitely have um, really, you know, taken, taken the reins as some of the leaders in the industry when it comes to Barnuminium building. Uh, we are full service architectural firm, back 40 buildings. I mean, that's, you know, that that's huge for people um, to have somebody like us who like we've been through all of it and more, and we're able to lend that part of our um, compassion, our expertise, all of those things to our clients. And so um, we've got a self build uh, contract or self contracting and self build group uh, that's part of Patreon. Uh, and that's been a really cool community to build because it is other people who are attempting to do the same thing, whether it be on the scale of a full build or just partial, or they want to be their own contractor, uh, or ju they're just really wanting to learn more about the process so that they are well-educated going into this. Um, you know, that's been so cool to just meet people all, literally all over the country and hear their stories. Um, yeah. And I think, I think through this, this whole series and everything, we're going to be able to help people like just kind of navigate the whole thing from personal life to is a barn dominium cheaper? Is a barn dominium, post frame barn dominium, even the style of home that you should be building? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. those are the questions we're going to be able to answer and help you kind of navigate um, in this series. If you follow along during this series, you're going to be able to get more information uh, that will help you make the right decision for your family. And it could be some of the same things that we did. And you might see some of these things and say, that's absolutely not the right choice for us. And, and, and then it saves you a lot of like debating. You might be like, well, that, that helps me know which path I'm supposed to take. So, yeah. So I think it will be, I thought it'd be pretty cool to relive all of this. All right, guys. So that is going to be the intro to our, uh, build series is self building worth it. And we're gonna launch into our first video, which I think I was clearing land or something. We're gonna watch the video and we're just kind of narrate it. We have written down some questions um, that we're gonna answer through there. If you guys have any questions for us of, you know, hey, how are you feeling? You know, anything, um, leave them in the comments and we will add those in there and talk about that uh, for you guys. But I think it's gonna be good. Um, as always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, share us with your friends, and we will catch you on the next video.